A Wise King and a Wise Son Adapted by Kristen Lehman and Karen Wilk Illustrated by Justin Gerald. Act 1 A long time ago, in a faraway land, there ruled a wise king. His great wisdom astounded the people of his kingdom, and they honored him faithfully. It put fear into the heart of every enemy, for none of them could do anything to harm him or his kingdom. During the years of his reign, wisdom came to be more valued than the brightest diamonds or the purest gold. The wise king often journeyed through his kingdom to listen to the folk who served him, and many said that each mile he rode multiplied his wisdom. His young daughter always traveled with him, winning the peasants' hearts with her charming smile and gracious heart. But as the years passed, the king grew old. Many times the good people of the kingdom wondered who would reign when the king could no longer raise his scepter. No royal son had been born to take his place. The wise king knew the thoughts of his subjects. One day in late summer the heralds of the throne rode through the kingdom spreading news that answered the question. Herald, hear ye, hear ye. Be it known that his majesty, the king, desires a worthy man to marry his daughter, the princess, and to reign as king in his stead. His majesty has planned a trial to determine the worthiness of each young man who seeks the hand of the princess. Many young men of the kingdom heard the proclamation and flocked to the palace to answer the king's challenge. One by one they failed and returned home. Meanwhile, in a far corner of the kingdom, there lived a widow and her three sons. The sons plowed their stubborn corner of land, raising just enough wheat to feed themselves through the winter. The widow gave her sons all the schooling they required. Many of the villagers could not read as well as the three boys or figure half so quickly. In the middle of the harvest, the youngest boy drove the yearling calf to market, to sell it. There he came upon a group of townsfolk gathered around in a public notice board. Clerk, can you read it, lad? Youngest son, yes, sir. Be it known that His Majesty the King desires a worthy man to marry his daughter, the princess, and to reign as king in his state. His Majesty has planned a trial to determine the worthiness of each young man who seeks the hand of the princess. Clerk, Ah, me, imagine that. I'm off at once to try for such a prize. Care to join me? Youngest son. Oh, I'd love to try. I saw the princess once from a long distance. She's fairer than the morning sunshine on a field of honeysuckle. But alas, I have a job to do here and cannot leave my widowed mother. The best to you. Sir, as he waved farewell. After supper that evening, the widow's three sons discussed the notice. Youngest son turned to his mother. What do you think, mother? You always give us good advice. Mother, smiling. Well, my sons, you have served me 
as good children and care for me for many a long year. Soon you must go out and seek your fortunes. My blessings go with you in whatever you decide. Oldest son, jumping up from the table, then I'll be off at once. You'll hear news of me within the week. Second son, rising from the table, I must try also, mother. I believe I'll be off in the morning. So in the early morning light of the next day, the youngest son waved goodbye as his brother set out on the same road the oldest son had traveled. Youngest son, taking his mother's arm, Mother, I cannot leave you to fend for yourself. I shall wait and see what may come to pass. The oldest brother arrived at the palace at noon. Dust rose from his shoes at each footfall, and his eyes were bleary with lack of sleep. Oldest son spoke boldly to the guard, I have come to take the test for the hand of the princess. Guard, come this way. The guard leads the way to the king. The guard ushered him into the throne room, where the king offered him meat and drink. King, the task I require is not difficult. Yonder is a field of wheat. He points out a window. You must harvest the wheat until noon tomorrow. If you do well, the princess will be wed to you. Oldest son, smiling, I have harvested wheat each fall since I was old enough to hold a scythe. Perhaps such a trial is too easy. King, crossing his arms, we shall see. The oldest son raced to the field. Over and over he swung the scythe, cutting the wheat. Then he bundled it in sturdy stacks and stood them on the edge of the field. The sun began to set as he worked on. Children laughed and ran home to dinner, but still he worked. All through the night the young man worked. By morning... He had only a corner of the field left. Suddenly, a blind man stumbled into the field. Oldest son, running to the man, Be careful, you'll crush the grain. He lifted the man awkwardly by the arm and set him on the road. Blind man, can you direct me to the palace? Oldest son, yes, straight down the road and to the left. Blind man, thank you. He shuffles away. The oldest son increased his pace, swinging, cutting, and bundling until the field stood clean. At the last swoosh of the scythe, he saw the king drive up in his coach. King, leaning out the window. Fine job, my son. But I'm sorry you did not pass. You have done better than most. But alas, the trial requires more. And so the oldest son returned home. Act 2. The second son reached the palace as the bells chimed for dinner. He was ushered into the dining room to eat with the king. King, pushing his plate back, your trial, as all the others have been, is to harvest a field of wheat for me until dinner tomorrow. You must do well. Second son, rubbing his hands together, indeed a simple task. I have wielded a scythe since I left the cradle. King, 
We shall see. The second son flew at once to the task of clearing a great portion of his field before dark. On through the night he worked, even more quickly than his brother. As dawn broke, a blind man stumbled across his path. Second son, taking the blind man's arm, What do you hear? I seek the palace. Second son, I have just time to guide you there, and then I must hurry back to my task. He leads the blind man away. The second son led the blind man to the palace gates, bade him farewell, and returned to the wheat field. Just as the last wheat fell, a lame man hobbled up. Lame man, can you direct me to the palace? Second son, pointing in the direction of the palace. Yes, straight ahead and to the left. The second son pulled the last shocks into a bundle and began tying it as the lame man stumbled away. Minutes later, the king drove up in his coach. King, looking over the field, a very fine job, my son, better than anyone before you. But alas, you too have failed. I am very sorry. He pats the boy on the shoulder. And so the second son followed the path of his brother and returned home. Both brothers told their adventures to their mother and bade the youngest brother attempt the task. Mother, putting her hand on his shoulder, perhaps it is your turn to try your hand. Youngest son, Thank you, mother. I have waited to make sure you were well cared for. Mother, you have learned well the ways of wisdom. Now take your things and be off. Put your learning to use. Before long, the guard at the gate was leading the youngest son to the throne room. The king and his daughter sat at a game of chess. The young man stood at the door, his heart melting at the sight of the lovely princess. Princess, Father, you shall put me in check no matter where I move. Youngest son, stepping forward, Your Highness, you do have one move that could win the game. Princess, picking up a chess piece, Why, yes, of course. I see it now. Thank you, kind sir. Youngest son, blushing and looking away. You're welcome. The young man's heart pounded so hard in his own ears that he stepped back, fearing that she would hear it beating. When the game was over, the king set it aside and explained the trial to the boy. Bowing, the youngest son hurried to begin the task. The scythe flew as he harvested the grain, but the field stretched on and on. The king had given him the largest field of all to cut. The young man worked on through the night. The morning came and passed, and he continued working. The heat of noon beat down, and he worked on still. As evening approached, a blind man came stumbling down the road. The boy saw him from a distance and ran to help him. Youngest son, helping the man. Where are you going, good sir? Blind man, to the palace. Youngest son, let me guide you there. The two laughed and talked along the way. Blind man, my blessings on you, my son. Youngest son, fare thee well. He runs in the direction of the field. He ran back down the road to the field and continued to cut the wheat. Soon a lame man approached. 
Again, the boy ran to help, offering his shoulder and joking and talking as he led the man to the palace. Lame man, my blessing to you, son. He sits down beside the gate. Youngest son, waving farewell. Thank you and farewell. In the field, the golden wheat bent and swayed with the breeze. Barely half of it lay in bundles. And far up the road, the coach of the king raised dust as it approached. The boy fell to cutting more quickly than he had ever done before. But it was too late. The coach drew to a stop. Youngest son, kneeling before the king. I am sorry, your highness. I have failed to complete the task, but I thank you for the opportunity. King, helping the boy to his feet. My son, you alone have passed the test. Not only did you deal kindly with the blind man and the lame man, but you also answered for your work with wisdom, showing that you alone are responsible for it. I told you only to harvest the wheat in the field. I did not say how much of the field was required. Youngest son, Your Highness, did those men speak with you? King, pointing to himself, I was those men. Now come with me. You have yet more to learn in the ways of ruling a kingdom.